everyone, welcome to my sunny desk. Today we're going to do a unboxing and then there will be part two for the swatching. So this is a September haul video and I already have a September haul video on this channel. However, if you watched it, you'll remember that technically I bought it um, at the end of August and haven't had time to process and edit and it came out in the beginning of September. So technically this one is September. Today is, let's see, 21st and I ordered it on the 19th. So um, let's look into it. I have my recycling bin ready. Okay, so these must be inks. So let's see. So here is Antelope Brown, Dalaroni FW ink. It's a uh, it's an interesting one. It looks beautiful on swatches and not much in the bottle. It just looks like a khaki, dirty, muddy, kind of greeny. It looks actually like a, like a brown green color. Okay, so that's that. Another brown is a burnt umber. So burnt umber usually I'm not using very often in watercolour, but again on a swatch this one looked really interesting. Then we have some gouache paints. So I have been eyeing these for a while and if you watched my channel um, I told you that I was really interested in trying out the Winsor Newton designer gouache and I have been making a little list of colors that I would enjoy and uh, one of my viewers really kindly um, pointed me towards a Winsor Newton channel a specific like uh, video where um, um, some of their watercolors and gouache paints were swatched out and there were a few really beautiful pinks which I added uh, to my order. I have to say as far as packaging goes this is top-notch in my opinion. It's like the best gouache paint tubes I have come across. I mean they just look perfect. So the colors I have here is Naples Yellow Deep Pale Rose Blush, Paraline Maroon. And then we have these. Here is Opera Rose. I have um, Opera Rose in a number of different brands in watercolor. And I was really sort of... Um, interested in seeing how it would behave in a gouache, keeping in mind it would have to be quite opaque um, and sort of a solid color. So that would be a beautiful color for an, you know, super bright pink lip or something like that. Rose Tyrian and Orange Lake Deep. I'm not sure, I think this was the orange color that really uh, caught my attention on Natasha Newton's channel recently. There was a lovely fiery orange and I think that was it. And then we have another brush. So in my previous haul you would have seen this one. The size 6 Pro Art Proline Plus. And then I also wanted a smaller and I think this is a number 2.
what's this yeah number two so they're like a oval tip and they're called filbert which i really like using with gouache paints That's just one, yeah. And then I finally got the Holbein Artist Colored Pencil. This is the something soft white, soft white. Use a knife to sharpen. So this is supposed to be a very, very um, potent <laughs> white. I'll take the stickers off later. So I am quite interested in trying this out. Finally, we have a new sketchbook. Now, in terms of the sketchbook itself, I already, oh, you can see my top. <laughs> um, so in terms of the sketchbook already, I have quite a few of these, but a smaller format, and I decided to get a bigger one. And we'll see, either I will use it as my main sketchbook, or I might replace my swatch sketchbook and start new swatches here. I haven't decided yet. It's got 60 sheets, it's 160 GSM, and I believe it's a 30% cotton. Let me just open it. So the format of it is 24 by 20.6 centimeters and I really enjoy the small sketchbook, um, yeah 35% cotton and the one that I am working now, this is my second one in the small format, so it's exactly the same paper. Um, that's the, the little one. And it's also, what is it, 160 GSM, yeah. So the texture is quite lovely, as you can see, hopefully, here. I'm trying to... There we go. Alright, so that is it for the unboxing part and we will now swatch things out. Welcome back for the swatches. So I'm going to start my new Dallaroni mixed media paper um, notebook and this one is 250 GSM A5 format and I just used up the entire um, notebook right here and I've done even a flip through so I'll try to link you to it if you haven't seen it yet. I have bought quite a few backups because I enjoy keeping this um, sketchbook as a way of kind of keeping track of things that I have purchased throughout the year and also what my favorites are. So this is the sketchbook that I do my art holes swatches in and then also my favorites videos as well and um, yeah so I'll try to link it down below in case you are interested I have found it on Amazon and it's been really really helpful okay so ignore these pencils they're from something I have been working on uh, what we are going to try out are these things right here. Also, um, I didn't purchase this on Jackson's because they were out of stock, but I found it on Amazon and actually it was like a lot cheaper. Uh, this is Princeton Artist Brush & Co. Uh, one of their catalyst tools and this is the 01 mini so it's like a little spatula it's nice and rubbery so it's great for when you're working with acrylic paints 
if you're working out of a tub of paint, it's good to get paint out of it or just to create kind of smudgy effects. I like that the handle is not as long as in these ones because these are great for like bigger canvases which I generally don't work in so it's like massive for me uh, I prefer things to be smaller so I like the small um, handle also it was like delivered next day literally so um, I will leave the link for you in case you're interested there are also other tools available as well so you can check them out uh, too if you want it on um, Amazon and uh, Jackson's, I'll leave uh, the Catalyst link as well in case you wanted to look through, you know, um, the entire range of them or something. Okay, so what we have is... Actually, I'm first going to go ahead and take the stickers off because they just bother me. <laughs> so what I use to remove the kind of like sticky residue from the stickers, which I cannot stand both the stickers and the residue, I used the Goo Gone, which has been recommended to me by my American viewers. I had no idea about this thing and it's fantastic. Uh, even in really stubborn uh, things, you, you have to work at it, but it does do it eventually. Um, okay, so to begin with, I am going to sharpen the pencil. I, I'm going to use the same knife here that I use for the packaging. Let's just see. So I've done this long time ago, the sharpening, so you're supposed to kind of go at an angle and just get the wood off. I would prefer to use a sharpener because it looks neater but if that's what they're advising to do, I'm just going to go with it. So we're getting there. You can see it's very thick, the lead in there. So I got to the lead here, but I'd like it a bit pointier, really. So I'm going to go ahead and start a bit more at the back. I think I will leave it at that. I don't know how sharp I can get it. I don't know how soft. This is meant to be. It feels actually very hard, mind you. It's not what I expected, but maybe then I can do a pointy. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to use a sharpener with it. If anyone watching knows this, the answer to that, then please do let us know. Life would be so much easier if you could use a sharpener here. Okay, I think this is as pointy as I as I would like to get it. So we'll try that out. I'm going to clean up now. Okay, just coming back to you, I can see there is like really sort of stickier residue on the um, blade and I guess that's probably why it's not advised to use a um, sharpener because it probably would gunk it up quite quickly. Um, so yeah, Let's see what it does on um, surfaces and backgrounds and things like that. <laughs> 